A consultation blitz to change the Harper government's controversial anti-terrorism legislation was launched today. The minister leading the launch is Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale, and he joins us from Edmonton. Uh, minister Goodale, you've promised uh, very specific changes to the bill during the campaign. You sort of worried it didn't balance security with personal privacy and the charter. Uh, why consult? Why don't you just do it? Well, there are several elements to this uh, uh, complex uh, national security issue, and we want to make sure that we get them all right and that we get the right configuration. As you know, we've already introduced uh, legislation on the Committee of Parliamentarians to provide a new form of, of uh, oversight and, and scrutiny for our national security agencies. Uh, we've got a budget allocation now for an office for counter-radicalization. Uh, we've got a, a, an examination underway with respect to cyber security. Uh, we made a number of changes and improvements and upgrades in our border relationship with the United States. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the final piece of the, the equation uh, is dealing with the, uh, with the specific legislative issues in Bill C-51. We identified five precisely uh, where uh, we thought the answer was pretty clear. But this consultation with Canadians is to ask them, now beyond those five that we specified in the platform, uh, what are the other elements uh, in Canadian security law uh, mm -hmm. that you would want to see changed with two objectives in mind. Number one, we need to be effective in keeping Canadians safe. And number two, we need to uphold the Constitution and the rights and freedoms of Canadians in an open democratic society. I seem to recall one of the more controversial aspects of the bill was that CSIS would have the power to uh, disrupt uh, suspected terrorism plots and you can interfere with travel plans or, or, or change websites. Is this power something that should be retained by the spy agency in your view? Uh, this is a, a, a very specific question that will be involved in these, in, in these consultations. Uh, we're asking the public. We're also asking parliamentarians to weigh in. We're asking subject matter experts. Uh, the key principle, and this is the one that we specified in the platform, is that all of our security agencies, uh, including CSIS, including the security establishment in national defense, and including the RCMP, uh, they need to follow the law and they need to uphold the Canadian Constitution. That principle of the, of the paramountcy of the, of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is absolutely fundamental. Uh, and in the course of, uh, of the, uh, the consultation, we will make it clear uh, that, that, that that's an, uh, an absolute principle that will be embedded in the law. How far do you think the government should go in countering terrorist propaganda? I know that's a concern as well. Well, the, the, uh, the issue uh, for a lot of people, uh, as they specified during the election campaign and since, is the, uh, uh, the, the looseness or the, the vagueness of the definitions that were included in, in Bill C-51. Uh, and uh, a lot of legal experts believe that some, some far more precise language ought to be uh, employed here. Uh, there was a, you remember uh, during the, right in the middle of the election campaign, there was the argument that perhaps some of the conservative election uh, advertising, in fact, contravened Bill C-51. Uh, that surely couldn't have been their intention, but what it does is demonstrate uh, how careless and sloppy some of the language was. So we'll be, we'll be working with legal experts to make sure that we tighten that up, uh, to have provisions that are focused on the real problem and are, at the end of the day, enforceable. Right. Mr. Goodale, like, uh, uh, charter compliance is the, is the number one commandment here. Uh, you've made that very clear. Uh, right now, you, you've been in power for eight months. Are, are there charter violations going on in the pursuit of public safety uh, that you're aware of? No, uh, I'm certainly not aware of any, and I've made it very clear to all of the security uh, uh, agencies, whether that's, uh, whether that's CSIS or the RCMP or any others, okay. that the Canadian government expects them to uh, adhere to the law of Canada, and we expect them to follow the Constitution of Canada. Right. Uh, the, uh, the government's view on this has been abundantly clear. On another issue, and this is not really a public safety issue, but I know you, you have some views on it. There are reports that American border security will turn away any Canadian who even admits to having smoked marijuana recreationally in the past. Is that your understanding of what really goes on at the border? Do you, do you have to answer that question? And if you do so and say yes, are you turned back? Well, uh, the, the, the border requirements for any country uh, are determined by that country. 
uh, and enforced by their border control officers. So uh, the behavior of those officers and the rules that they apply in the case of the United States would be up to the government of the United States. Uh, but the, uh, the irony here is that there are at least four jurisdictions in the United States that have already legalized the use of, of marijuana. Uh, so the behavior that seems to be applied at the border is absolutely inconsistent with uh, a very significant portion of uh, the U.S. domestic uh, population. Uh, you know, the, the current regime, the, the regime that's been in place for a great many years, has, has failed Canada and the United States. Uh, it, by statistics from the United Nations, teenagers in North America are among the heaviest users of, uh, of marijuana in the, uh, in the Western world. There are quite literally billions of dollars that flow into the hands of organized crime every year uh, because of that uh, illicit traffic. The current regime has failed. It has not protected our kids and it has simply enriched or organized crime. We believe our approach of a new legal regime with tight restrictions and regulations and taxation will have a far better result in keeping marijuana out of the hands of our kids and uh, stopping that flow of illegal money to, uh, to crime bosses. Okay. Uh, and we are very anxious to explain to the United States that the regime we're developing in Canada will be far more effective than theirs. All right. Off good ale. I guess we should just lie if we're asked that question at the border. Anyway, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. All the best, Doc.